1907, Stanford students at football games formed a white S on a red background in the rooting section by wearing red or white coats and hats and sitting in specified seats. In later years, their hats were half red, half white. As they took their seats, they turned either the red or the white side facing out to form a large red S. At some point, hat stunts were added during halftime shows. The hats were turned to display two color images designed especially for the opponent that day. From hat stunts evolved card stunts. A stack of foot square cards offered two advantages over a hat, more surface area and a more extensive color palette. USC claims to have been the first university to perform a card stunt. In 1922, 200 students spelled Trojan using colored squares of cardboard. Stanford started doing card stunts in 1925. During the years before World War II, a typical card stunt show consisted of up to a dozen stunts. To perform a stunt, the students raised their cards in unison to form a multicolor still image. Then they lowered their cards in unison in preparation for the next stunt. On each instruction card were the stunt numbers, followed by a streak of colored crayon indicating the card that the student was to hold up for that stunt. Stunt one was always a hat stunt. Sometimes, two consecutive stunts were performed without lowering the cards. Instead, certain students, upon the call of a number assigned to their seat, flipped to a new color. With this technique, a bear could fade to a snake or the name of the college could be spelled out in flowing script. Stanford's signature stunt, the expanding S, appears to have been introduced after World War II. The expanding S was truly animated. Some students changed colors several times as the red block S expanded to fill the card section and the brown and green Palo Alto tree rose through its center. Instruction cards were changed to have 30 flip numbers next to each of which was a rubber stamped color name. Hat stunts appear to have been eliminated around that time. By 1960, the Stanford card section had 45 rows of 77 seats. Each Saturday morning, student volunteers placed instruction cards along with six two-color cards underneath each seat, carefully arranged so that the front cards faced out to form a block S. Several still and animated stunts were performed at every halftime break, guided by a leader calling out numbers in sequence into a microphone. A typical stunt related to the opponent of the day or to Rose Bowl aspirations. The show always concluded with the spectacular expanding S. But marking dozens of color changes on thousands of instruction cards became an intensive effort for student volunteers. In 1960, Marshall Turner, Stanford Rally Commission art director, mentioned to Professor George Forsyth his concern about an impending shortage of volunteers. Forsyth, in search of applications to interest the university in computers, recruited two undergraduates, Larry Breed and Earl Bobert, to the cause. Breed and Bobert proceeded to develop the Stanford Card Stunt Program. They designed the program in the first half of 1961 and implemented it in the summer. Their Burroughs 220 program appears to have been one of the first raster-based color animation systems. With the support of Forsyth and Professor John Harriet, they managed to produce stunts for several games in the latter part of the fall of 1961. The program was recognized at the time as a milestone computer application. The San Francisco Chronicle featured it in a story on the front page of the Sporting Green. The New Yorker had a reference to it in a filler. The Journal of Chemical Engineering covered it in a 1961 issue. 
Burroughs published an article in its contact magazine and issued a press release. In 1963, USC's card section almost doubled in size to about the same size as Stanford's. To avoid doubling the production time, an alumnus named Hugh Hoskins wrote a computer program that appears to have been similar in function to Pass 2 of the Stanford program. It had no animation language comparable to Stanford's, and it handled only one flip still stunts and two flip stunts like the script SoCal. In December 1969, Robert Hartman published an article in USC Engineer in which he claimed that Hoskins' computer program was the first of its kind. However, he dates the program to 1963, two years later than Stanford's. Therefore, we believe that Stanford's were the first done on a computer. Another innovation in card stunts were night stunts. UCLA students held colored cellophane over flashlights. Back at Stanford in the summer of 1962, Larry Breed handed over program maintenance and the production of stunts to Larry Tesler. For the fall 1965 season, Bob Harriet prepared the stunts. In 1966, John Souter took over. We don't know who handled 1967 through 69, but Don Wise helped in 1969, and he was in charge in 1970. That was the last year of card stunts at Stanford. <laughs>